The painting of Saturn devouring his son by Francisco Goya is based on the Greco-Roman mythology of the god Saturn who feared he would be overthrown by one of his children, according to a prophecy. So he decided to devour each of his children as they were born. The only child he didn't get to eat was Zeus, because his mother Rhea managed to hide him from Saturn. Zeus eventually overthrew Saturn, thus fulfilling the prophecy, and everybody lived happily ever after up in Mount Olympus, or something to that effect. Yet this gruesome scene has also been painted by many other great painters such as Peter Paul Rubens, and it's even been sculpted by artists like Simon Hertrell. But Francisco Goya's painting, which was done in his old age, around his early 70s, seems to be painted with a sense of urgency that can be seen in the rough and raw, masterful brushstrokes. There seems to be no hesitation or second guessing behind these strokes, which is why I find Goya's version to invoke a much more visceral feeling of horror and darkness. This painting always haunted me since I first saw it, as it has haunted so many others who've also seen it, especially those who've had the opportunity to experience it at the El Prado Museum in Spain. One day it occurred to me to paint Saturn as Fidel Castro, but I hesitated doing it at first because it's very difficult for me to look at Fidel Castro's face for any period of time, especially since it would involve trying to capture this revolting narcissist likeness. The reason why I have such a disgust for this psychopathic murderous tyrant is because my family's Cuban. And though I feel extremely fortunate to not have been born under the clutches of the Castro regime within the socialist tropical gulag they turned Cuba into, that all too many academics and pseudo-intellectuals throughout the world still do not want to acknowledge, I'm painfully aware of what so many of my relatives, not to mention millions of Cubans, have endured thanks to the societal cancer this walking, talking human tumor managed to spread for decades. But I'm not the only person to have associated Fidel Castro with Saturn devouring his children. Following is part of a speech given by Ioani Sanchez, a Cuban journalist who, despite being a woman, has bigger balls than I will ever have when it comes to denouncing the monstrous atrocities by the Castro regime. And she has so much more authority to speak about it than I ever will, because she was born and raised in Cuba. And she's written about the Castro regime while living in Cuba. She's been harassed, arrested, beaten, intimidated, and humiliated to say the least, but has managed to leave the country to give speeches like this. And she has an incredible level of courage to return to Cuba where she still lives and continues to endure the regime's oppression in order to report straight from the belly of the beast. And in this speech, she speaks about how she also found Francisco Goya's painting to remind her of Fidel Castro and how his fear of losing power has played out among Cuba's own top government officials. And though this speech was given back in 2013, what she says about Miguel Diaz-Canel, Cuba's current puppet president, is somewhat ominous given how he brutally cracked down on Cuban protesters after the July 11, 2021 protests, where innocent, unarmed people were killed, teenage boys dragged from their homes to be taken to other cities to do the regime's dirty work of further repression, and so many other horror stories that mainstream news outlets will never be privy to, or may choose not to report altogether, especially those that still sympathize with this murderous regime. Eh, bueno, hace justamente dos días estaba yo con un amigo que veo aquí paseando por las salas del Museo del Prado, y nos deteníamos frente a una obra que de Goya, una obra que yo admiro y que cito a menudo, que es Saturno devorando uh -huh. a sus hijos. ¿Qué es lo que ha pasado con el modelo cubano? Se ha comido a todos sus posibles sucesores. Ha desfenestrado a todo aquel que estuvo una vez en los entramados del poder y que brilló con luz propia, que tuvo determinado carisma. Los últimos desfenestrados, los últimos devorados de Saturno, los conocemos. Eh, Carlos Laje, que llegó a ser vicepresidente, y Felipe Pérez Roque, que llegó a ser el canciller cubano. ¿no? Eh, Ahora mismo, en este ocaso de su vida, cuando el reloj está a punto de marcar la medianoche, han mirado hacia los lados a ver quién queda. Y han descubierto a este hombre, Miguel Díaz Canel, que es el actual primer vicepresidente, que ha aprendido muy bien la lección. Si brillas, sales del poder. Si tienes voz propia, te aniquilan. Entonces es un hombre que ha sido seleccionado más por su fidelidad que por su capacidad, más por su compromiso de continuidad que porque, re, porque pueda ser un reformista. Hay que ver cómo funciona el día que no lo están mirando sus jefes. ¿no? De todas maneras, yo no pongo mis esperanzas en posibles reformistas dentro del gobierno. No estamos esperando un Gorbachev. No estamos esperando un Yeltsin. Si llega, que no beba tanto. <risa> Esperamos que no beba tanto. <risa> 
tanto vodka, pero que beba ron. Esperemos, esperemos. All too many people still associate Fidel Castro with another story from the Bible, David versus Goliath, where Fidel Castro is supposedly David who stands up to Goliath represented by the United States. Yet in reality, even if it could be argued that Fidel Castro stood up to the United States, he did it by stepping all over the Cuban people, by denying them their freedoms to live their lives as they saw fit, to deny them the right to create their own opportunities and livelihoods and instead subject them to living by monthly rations of food while he and his regime managed to hoard resources and live lives of luxury while bankrupting the nation and forever blaming Cuba's impoverishment on the U.S. embargo. Worst of all was his system of checks and balances which are still in place after his death. This is how neighbors spy and report on other neighbors, and even family members will turn on each other, sometimes in public, through Los Actos de Repudio, or Acts of Repudiation, where dozens of people will harass and even terrorize families right outside their home. And for all the praise of Cuba's high literacy rates, which were quite high well before the Castro regime took over, their supposedly free education has always involved horrendously misguided indoctrination, especially where teachers are expected to ask misleading questions of their students to cause them to unwittingly denounce their own families of being counter-revolutionary. Yet what this monster did to Cuba is unfortunately not unique to human history. What's going on now in Afghanistan under the Taliban's rule makes Cuba look like it's still a fantastic vacation destination where one doesn't have to think twice about a murderous regime that continues to oppress its people. It's horrifying to think that the myth of Saturn devouring his children is just a representation of the all too real way humanity has been governed by murderous psychopaths who are neurologically incapable of empathy for others, but are clearly capable of fear and paranoia as they do whatever it takes to secure their totalitarian grip over the lives of millions of their own people. But as much as this pattern repeats itself through history, it's not an immutable law of physics. We no longer are ruled by the whims of Greek aristocracy, Roman emperors, let alone Egyptian pharaohs or Aztec priests. There are barely any more totalitarian monarchies, and we are discovering that as messy and confusing as democracy may be, it's an undeniably more viable alternative to tyranny when it comes to ensuring the well-being and prosperity of people. But in order to keep democracies, we need to do a better job of identifying the Saturns who devour their own people and stop comparing them to the heroic King Davids, who probably weren't all that heroic in real life either. We really need to stop surrendering our rights and our lives to narcissistic, power-hungry politicians who will stop at nothing to benefit themselves at the cost of everyone else. This is not simply human nature. It's just the nature of a few humans who manage to get away with the murder of their own people. By the way, I'm also painfully aware that this digital drawing is crap. Clearly, I'm no Francisco Goya, not even digitally, and attempting this project truly exposed the limits of my skills as a digital painter. But making this video also exposed the limits as to what could be done to depose that despotic regime that continues devouring its own people, even as it withers and dies a dishonorable death. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and consider supporting it by purchasing t-shirts, prints, or original art from any of the links below, and thanks for watching.